well, this is the 44 Magnum Auto Mag, and if it... Crap, that's the wrong Auto Mag. I don't think it can remove fingerprints at all. Thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, where we are taking a look at an Automag 4, specifically. Uh, and uh, to be clear, there is a big difference between the original Automag pistol, uh, as in two words, Auto, Automatic, Mag, Magnum, pistol, and this gun, which is one in a series of Automag, single word, uh, pistols that were released much later. So there's an Automag 2, 3, 4, and 5, and this is a 4. Now both, the, both companies, both guns, are, uh, are basically the responsibility of the same guy, a guy named Harry Sanford. And in the mid-60s, he, along with a designer by the name of Max Guerra, came up with the idea for the Automag pistol, or the Automag pistol, sorry. Uh, this, the idea was to make an automatic pistol that could fire the 44 Magnum cartridge. And they didn't quite do that. They designed their own new rimless cartridge, the 44 AMP, auto mag pistol, and uh, set to work producing them. The, the first guns actually came out, I believe, in 1971, and they only made a couple thousand of them. The company very quickly went bankrupt because, well, they were selling the guns for like a thousand dollars less than they actually cost to produce. I think the idea was uh, to drive market volume, but it didn't work, and instead they just drove themselves immediately out of business. Now, the original Auto Mag would go through like a whole, more than half a dozen different companies and iterations, and it's a very complicated story, and eventually it just completely petered out and died. Although it actually even hasn't, because there's now a new company around making new Auto Mag pistols. However, that's not what we're talking about here. Um, Sanford wasn't one to be dissuaded, and eventually, years later, decided he wanted to get back into the Magnum pistol game. And so he had a, a new company called uh, Arcadia Machine and Tool, AMT, and decided to make a new generation of Magnum pistols, which he called the Automag. One word. Uh, obviously to, uh, to establish that connection to the original Automag, which has an absolutely massive cult following. So, in 1987, they released the Automag 2, which was chambered for the 22 Magnum cartridge. Uh, I believe the year after that, they released the Automag 3, chambered for the 30 carbine. Uh, and then you're at 30 carbine as well as they also, I believe, made that one in 9mm Winchester Magnum. Then uh, in, I believe, 1990, maybe 1991, they introduced the Automag 4 in 45 Winchester Magnum, as well as, I believe, 10mm Winchester Magnum, although those are extremely rare. And then they would also come out with the Automag 5 in 50 Action Express. These pistols, uh, they survived a little bit longer than the original guns, although they didn't make a whole lot more of them. Um, let, first off, let's take a closer look at this. Let's, let me show you how this is put together, because it's totally different than the original gun. All right, so here's the Automag 4 up close. And just for a size comparison, let's go ahead and... How about a Luger? Let's compare that to a... Luger there. This thing is a really quite massive pistol, and perhaps the most uh, the most substantial element of that is the length of the grip. I mean, compare that to that to that. Uh, this thing is really quite a handful, and it has to be because of the length of the cartridge. You know, it, 45 Win Mag is a really long cartridge, as are really all of the the Auto Mag cartridges. Even the 30 Carbine is a pretty darn long cartridge, and it makes for a very front to back wide grip on the gun. Now aside from that, we have a, a six and a half inch long barrel. Uh, there were a few other options, but this is the, the typical barrel length. And mechanically, this thing is completely different from the original Automag. That original gun was short recoil operated, but had a rotating bolt. Um, and kind of a whole... it didn't have a, a slide sort of in the way that we're used to a slide. Where the Automag, the late ones like this one, this is a Browning design scaled up for 45 Win Mag. So this is short recoil with a tilting barrel, just like you would get from a 1911. Uh, well, not quite identical, but very, very close. It is single action only, hammer. It does have a manual safety, and what the safety does is simply block the firing pin from being hit. So you can still drop the hammer when the safety's on, but what'll happen is that the hammer will hit 
that block and not hit the firing pin. So, uh, the safety is entirely... it's only located up here in the slide. It doesn't do anything to disconnect the hammer or the sear or anything like that. Magazine release is in the typical place. We have a seven round capacity, 45 Winchester Magnum, as marked there on the bottom of the magazine. So, manufactured by AMT, it's an Automag 4 in 45 Win Mag. Irwindale, California by AMT, however also by Galena Industries. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the late 90s AMT went out of business. Um, this was unsustainable, and all of their equipment and their intellectual property rights and their parts and their tooling and all was purchased by a company called Galena Industries, which went ahead and continued to make the guns. And so this is one that was originally made by AMT and marked, but not assembled into a gun before they went bankrupt. It is made of stainless steel. Uh, basically all of the components, other than the, the barrel and the sear, are made of 17-4 stainless. Uh, this did lead to some galling issues over time that they attempted to resolve. Maybe effectively, maybe not. Uh, and of course we have that nice modern uh, safety label on the side of the slide. And the serial number is all peen etched in there. Uh, Serial number 2045. And remember, this is from the very end of production. This is after Galena bought uh, bought out the, the whole company. Uh, 2001 was the very end of production. The late 90s are when Galena bought it. So only a couple of years there for them to produce a few more guns. Disassembly is almost like a 1911. Uh, normally on a 1911 you pull the slide pretty much all the way back. On this guy, fortunately, you only have to pull it back to there, so that the slide stop lines up with that notch. Pull it to there, and then we can push the slide stop out. And then the slide comes off the frame. Now to further disassemble it, what you do is push in the plug, the spring guide plug here, and then rotate the barrel bushing, just like a 1911. Uh, I tried doing that, and it's really stiff on this one, and I don't want the barrel bushing to go flying across the room, so I'm going to leave it at this point. Um, if you have seen a 1911, you understand how this thing works. Uh, with the sole exception, I should say, being on the 1911 there are a couple lugs in the barrel right about here that lock into matching recesses on the top of the slide. On this, it uses a, a more modern method where the locking surface is actually the very back, or the very front, of the ejection port. So the barrel, uh, the, the top of the chamber here, locks up against the back of the slide right there. So when it cycles, it drops down, like so, and cycles like that. And it's really, I think it's kind of funny just looking at this thing and how freaking long the chamber is compared to, say, a 1911 or a Browning High Power. We have the cam track here in the bottom of the barrel. Uh, the slide stop pin goes through that and connects to the frame. And so what happens is when uh, when you begin, when you fire, and uh, the whole slide assembly begins to recoil backward, for this little horizontal section the barrel stays locked. And then as, uh, as the track moves upward that forces the barrel to tilt down, like so, until at this point it's fully unlocked, then the barrel stops, that pin holds it uh, connected to the frame, the slide is able to keep going and cycle the action. In the interests of full and fair disclosure, I will say that I have never done any shooting with one of these. I can't first-hand comment on their reliability, but if you, uh, if you read the comments and the opinions of the people who do have them, uh, you'll find mixed messages about uh, how reliable they really are. These were never meant to be defensive pistols. These are guns for plinking for hunting, uh, and for the, the sort of high-power um, target shooting that you, uh, you occasionally see with Magnum automatic pistols. Ultimately, production of the Automag 4 ended in 2001, I believe. Uh, and it suffered from the same problem that all of these Magnum pistols do, which is people think they're really cool. Uh, there's a lot of hype about them usually. They have absolutely hardcore devoted fan bases but not very large fan bases. The fact of the matter is if you're shooting 45 Win Mag or 45 AMP uh, or 50 AE or any of these cartridges, you're looking at a very expensive cartridge to purchase, 
They're typically very small productions, so only a couple of them are ever really actually available. Like, you can go into a gun store and just buy the ammunition. You usually have to go through some, some real hurdles to get the ammo. Special ordering it, hand-loading it yourself is the obvious answer. And that takes some dedication. Uh, the guns are expensive, the ammo is expensive. They kick. They've, the whole point of this sort of thing is that it has a lot of power, which means a lot of recoil. And for all the bluster that you will often see when people talk about stuff like this, honestly, a lot of them are fairly uncomfortable guns to shoot, and they're not really so good for the casual enthusiast. You really have to be a devoted fan to really enjoy shooting guns like this. So there are a few of those people, but historically there just haven't ever been enough of them to turn one of these guns into a real hit. Um, you'll see probably the most successful one has been the Desert Eagle. You'll notice it's available in a couple of cartridges that are really easily available, 357 mag and 44 mag, as well as the 50 AE. When you get to 45 Winchester Magnum, well, you know, it's sort of available, but it's a difficult cartridge. So uh, ultimately High Standard bought the rights to the Automags, and they have gone ahead and I believe they are only producing the Automag 2 in 22 Winchester Magnum. That's the one that doesn't have so much recoil, does have easily accessible ammunition, that's going to be the most popular one. So that's the only one that really survives in production uh, any longer. So, anyway, if you would like more information on this particular one, uh, Rock Island's catalog page has their pictures, their description, their price estimate, and that sort of thing. You can get to that catalog by way of ForgottenWeapons.com in the link in the description text below. Thanks for watching.